Hey, beautiful souls. I am here for our Wednesday live chat. Hello, how are you? Um, some tech issues, so I'm about a minute late, but hopefully you guys are seeing me and uh, jumping on the live here with me. <clears throat> Today, I wanted to chat about something that I think all of us deal with. It's this idea of burnout and overwhelm, but specifically for energetically sensitive people. Now, I really feel like most of us have been feeling this, I don't know, interesting energy, I'll say, where it feels like time is moving really fast right now, maybe faster than it has for a lot of us in a long time. We went through this period of, you know, um, COVID and shutdown and work and stopping work and back to work and uh, it was so up and down. And I feel like so many of us had this feeling last year when it turned to 2022 of like, oh, okay, once it's the new year, um, things will shift and, and we'll get back to some version of, of normal, right? And I, for me and for a lot of people, I know that didn't really happen in 2022. Maybe like it's a new uh, a new normal, I guess, or um, a new abnormal, if you will. But same thing with 2023. I feel like a lot of us were, you know, thinking, okay, maybe we're out of the woods. Maybe this is something that, um, you know, we can shift at the new year and have this new fresh energy, have a... a I don't know, things shifting a little bit, but what I'm seeing and feeling in the energy, and I, I'm curious to know if this resonates with you, is not only is time feeling like it's moving so much faster. I mean, I know in theory, we all have the same like 24 hours in a day, like they say, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it. It feels like time is rolling out so quickly, right? But it also feels like our to-do lists have like quadrupled, whether you work for yourself like I do or you work for someone else, it feels like the amount of tasks that are required of us have like quadrupled where things were already tight for time for most of us beforehand. I just feel like there is, you know, not only so much more we need to do, but I think we've all seen this in our own lives. Uh, different, of course, depending where you live, but cost of living has gone way up has gone crazy. I was just at the store the other day and I was shocked to see that just like a regular size bottle of bleach was $10, which is sounds crazy. Um, you know, something that's normally like $3. So I feel like from all these different directions, not only are we having to strive to like achieve more, produce more, do more. But then with all of the social media platforms, we're in more contact, we're checking up and that's creating a level of stress and anxiety too. So rather than dwelling on the stress and anxiety, because I think we're all feeling it in our own lives, in our own ways, I have been exploring the idea of burnout and balance and overwhelm and kind of an ebb and flow between the busyness of life and taking breaks or taking rest. Now, I do want to say that for me, I understand and believe that sometimes uh, self-care can feel um, it's a privilege, right? Uh, there have been times in my life where I was a single mom with no help or support, working multiple jobs, and um, could barely like think about doing anything for myself, let alone uh, take time off or <laughs> self-care. So I, I just want to acknowledge that there is a level of privilege even in this conversation that we're having, because for some of us at different times in our life, um, or, you know, different phases or periods of our of our life, things can look different and there can feel like there is not a way to get self-care, take time off, et cetera. So I, I do want you to know that I appreciate and understand, um, you know, that that's a privilege that not everybody even can consider why they feel overwhelmed or how they could shift their schedule or what can come and go to, you know, change that. I am doing something this week that is a little strange for me. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to be going on a little trip with my bestie. I normally don't talk about trips till I'm back, but um, I'm preparing to go. And I know that might sound ridiculous that, 
you know, it's like a big deal to take a little trip and it's just a little trip. It's not, it's not like weeks and weeks of vacation. It's just four days. (laughs) But for me, you know, because of my past, because of, you know, having been a single mom and having been someone that's constantly having to make soup out of make, you know, soup out of rocks kind of a thing, like make something out of nothing and try really hard for everything that that I've ever had. Um, it can feel stressful to think about taking a break or taking a pause. And even just this week, I've been super overwhelmed with these lists of like all the things I'm trying to get done and squeeze in before I go. And this does tie in a lot to, you know, for a lot of us to this idea of people pleasing. Some of it is that I want to get out all the things I'm sending out weekly or trying to put out there weekly for for you guys and for anyone else who's listening. I don't want to disappoint anyone by like taking a bye week or, you know, saying no podcast this week. Um, So I'm trying to like get all of these things done. I've also been trying to prepare for that free live workshop that we have. We've been planning this trip since like November. So it's been coming, but sometimes just with the busyness of life, things can sneak up on us and it can feel stressful to try to think about taking a break for yourself. Now, for me, sometimes it can even feel stressful to think about taking a break in the day, um, which is something I'm working on. And I'm curious to know how this feels for you. Are you someone that has no problem you know, taking time off or, or taking time and space for yourself? Are you someone who is more like me that's very aware of your like to-do list and all the responsibilities and and taking time off can sometimes feel overwhelming in itself because you know there's this idea that maybe things are piling up while you're gone um and i went many many years without taking you know let alone vacations but like breaks at all really and so this is something different for me this is something i'm getting used to my kids are grown i you know i'm at a different phase in my life Uh, And I am just being very aware of wanting to make sure that I am creating some version of work-life balance for myself because, you know, probably much like you, I can end up feeling really overwhelmed in my to-do list. Um, You know, I just did taxes. So with being aware of like all of our uh, financial, whatever it is for you, you know, what you... Um, what you make, what you owe, what you're trying to make, what your goals are, what you're trying to do. And then as sensitives, we can put all this additional pressure on ourselves, right? Because not only are we aware of our own feelings, but we're aware of the feelings of the people in our life. Sometimes the people at the grocery store, we're aware of, you know, um, the the shifts and changes and the way it's feeling, like I said, really fast paced or um, our own sensitivities to like just getting extra tired sometimes based on the seasons or based on the moon cycle. It's a little different for all of us. Uh, But it's just it's just this idea that I'm just starting to figure out for myself. I think we all work on it throughout our lives, but rest and play and balance is something that we need to foster and nurture as like an ongoing thing that we're doing for ourselves. So I'm just curious for you, are you someone that has a lot of permission in your space for time off? Are you someone that just takes rests regularly, like in your day-to-day schedule? Do you travel? Do you carve out time for like Um, You know, I think kind of like the old way was like people had a a more of like a traditional job and worked at that job for, you know, I think ideally it was like their whole life and had their vacation every year and had their retirement. And for a lot of us, it doesn't look like that. Um, So for you, are you someone who's finding ways to go on trips and take time off and enjoy your friends? And how are you figuring out this work-life balance? It's something that is a real priority to me this year. Um, in a lot of ways, I'm in the best place that I've ever been in my life, but something's missing in my personal work-life balance because like I said, I can be someone who just gets so focused on work and I love my work and I love creating and I love getting to work with the spirit world. So, you know, my work's pretty good. So wanting to focus on it um, is a positive thing, but anything can become unhealthy if we do it too much, right? We, we talk about this, um, well, a lot of you heard me talk about this before, even if we're doing community service, for example, and giving in a good way, if it is 
too much, right? Where we're just stretching ourselves too thin, letting ourselves get run down, getting sick, it can be unhealthy. And a lot of it ties back to this idea of people pleasing and, um, you know, making sure we have enough. So it is something I'm exploring and working on my in myself. Uh, I don't always share things that I'm working on until I have them kind of like figured out or like a little less than I can give you tied up in a nice bow. But I don't have that. And my spirit, my guides, my soul has been encouraging me to, especially on these weekly lives, pop on and chat about things that I personally am still working on. Um, (laughs) I know sometimes we can see spiritual practitioners or, you know, whatever you want to classify me as and think we have some different understanding or we have it like all figured out. And, you know, in some ways we probably have some of it figured out, but in other ways we're all still human and we're all still works in progress, right? So what do you do in your life to make sure you're carving out time for, I don't know, fun, relaxation, work-life balance? Are you someone who just like checks out on the weekends and takes your days off? That's another funny thing that a lot of people don't know about me is I, I often end up, um, if I have one day off a week, that's great, but I often end up still working on on those days uh, and not getting, you know, even a full day off to myself. I try to get one day off um, where I don't like do technology or answer emails or anything like that. But are you able to do that? Are you someone who, you know, clocks out when you clock out and then your time is your time? Are you someone who is exhausted and overwhelmed and You know, for me, sometimes by the time I'm done my work for the day, like I've given it all. I the way I always think of it is like leaving it all out there on the floor, right, or on the court, or you know, whatever, um, whatever your hobbies are that makes sense for you. But I do kind of leave it all out there on the floor, and by the time I'm done with work for the day, I don't always have much left to even consider, like going to dinner, or it's usually, you know, late in the evening, and I'm I'm already tired, and I'm also trying to get in my meditation and like going for a walk, moving my physical body and stretching and doing the like more self-care things in that way. Uh, And with the way things are right now and how fast it feels like time is moving and how much everything has shifted, I think this is something we all need to be continuously evaluating, reevaluating, and working on in our own lives. It's it's a focus for me this year. Um, I'm also looking at how boundaries plays into this because I'm always working on, um, you know, boundaries and understanding them and making healthy boundaries and all of that. So I'm just curious to hear your perspective on this this day. What's working for you? What's not working for you? Um, Are you someone who just gets really consumed with your work and is head down and could go weeks without seeing, you know, friends or traveling? And maybe for you, it's it's not taking a big trip. I know, like I said, that's a privilege and a luxury that not everyone can do, even for me with like a little four day trip. but you know, there are staycations, there's camping, there's all kinds of things. So I'm not, I'm not trying to attach this to like a, an income level. Um, but time is a commodity, right? It is the thing that we can't create more of, no matter what we do. And we all are aware, uh, particularly if you're in the Joy Soul Spa Facebook group, hi loves. Um, we're all aware that you know, time isn't guaranteed, that our time here, you know, we get however much time we get in this lifetime. And it's not something that's guaranteed. It's not something we can, um, like a video game, earn more time. It doesn't work like that. So are you finding ways to, you know, get creative self-care or inspiration or motivation through being with friends? What are you doing that creates that balance in life for you? Um, I'm hoping that you guys will share your tips and tricks. I, I want to really be fo- focusing on this so I can, you know, first of all, learn it from myself because I think we teach what we need to learn, right? And then I want to really get some tools that I can teach you guys based on what's working for all of you. So share in the comments, whatever platform you're watching this on, and even if it's on the replay, and let me know what does work-life balance look like for you? Um, when <laughs> I've been a mom since I was really young. I had my first kiddo at 20. So you know, from the time I was that age, I was momming and working. And like I said, often working more than one job and 
doing all of that. So I I didn't have it figured out then. Um, I thought I'd have it figured out now. My kids are grown. I uh, I'm single, so it's like my time is my own. I'm not you know outside of um, outside of my work and my teaching, and I'm not necessarily bound to other people in that way. So I can create my schedule, and I just thought it would be easier now. But it's I'm finding it's not. I'm finding that I am just really doing a lot of work, and uh, while I, like I said, I love it, and I love getting to share everything with you guys, I am not always finding enough time to balance out and to live the vibrancy and and fun of life and put myself out there. Um, she said, I love to walk early morning and play cricket. That's cool. Uh, I try to go for walks early in the morning too. But to me, that just feels more like maintenance for myself, my meditation, my walk, stretching my body. Those are like maintenance things, but it doesn't necessarily feel like balance in the like fun, refreshing, rejuvenating kind of way. And maybe for you, that's what you need to refresh, rejuvenate yourself. Um, so I love that because I also want to hear, I mean, you make a great point, Ashish. I also want to hear what is it for you because it, it's different for all of us. We're all different personality types. We all have different history. We all um, have experienced different traumas and those color our lives and our behaviors in very different ways. I'm so excited to do the free live workshop with you guys on the 10th too, because we are going to be doing some exploration of what might be blocking you. Uh, and I'm going to teach you some tools for how you can continue to work through that even after the workshop. We're going to learn so many things. I'm going to teach you the foundational tool that all professional psychics and mediums that I know use. Um, we are going to, like I said, learn about blocks. We're going to learn how to, even when you're learning how to use your intuition, um, there's a, a workaround to get like a clear sign or guidance that's outside of yourself. So we're going to learn that. We're going to learn how to connect with our loved ones in the spirit world. There's going to be some free live mini readings. There's going to be so much. And I'm hoping that that will bring some fun, some excitement, some rejuvenation. Um, and uh, I'm trying to... Uh, Namyoho Ringi Kyo, that is a, um, Ashish is asking about that. That is a form of meditation that is more associated with the Buddhist religion or Tibetan Buddhism. And it is a mantra that is said as a form of meditation, if I, yeah, like a prayer mantra. Um, so that is what I know about um, Namyoho Ringi Kyo. And I think I'm saying that right, but I, uh, it's not a practice that I use, but I've seen it done. It's a beautiful practice. So whatever meditation practice works for anyone, I think that's wonderful. The, the one that I'm going to teach is the foundational meditation for all of your psychic development, intuitive development, um, all of that. So I hope you will join me on April 10th for that. I hope you will share with me what do you do for not just self-care, but I mean like to rejuvenate yourself, to like re-inspire yourself, to get reinvigorated? How do you really rest, relax, recharge? Let me know. I'm so excited to hear your responses and to continue processing this with you guys because um, we're all a work in progress, right? Even me, I will be sharing my vacation with you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, I don't always share when I'm when I'm uh, traveling because I like to be present. I try not to be on my devices a lot, but don't worry. I will take pictures for you guys and I will post them in the Joy Soul Spa Facebook group as well as on my Instagram page at Joyful Medium. So I hope you will join me in any of those places. Um, thanks for being here with me today. I am so curious to hear your process in all of this and um, I'm really excited to keep reading the comments and, and look for your shares about that. So big hugs, lots of love. I will see you soon. And remember, get in the Joy Soul Spa Facebook group for that workshop, Ignite Your Intuition, in just five days. It's free. It's live. It's five days. There are replays available, but only in my Facebook group, Joy's Soul Spa. That's the only place you'll find the lessons, the replays. That's the place I'm going to do the live coaching. Um, and I'll do coaching on the replays too. So if, even if you can't make the live session, but you're watching the replays and, and answering in the comments, I'll still coach and respond with you. So I'm excited to see you then. I hope you guys will uh, get in that group so you can take advantage of this free live workshop. 
and maybe it'll help you manage your own perspective. Um, I'm working on mine, so I want you guys to know that I am always a work in progress as well. Um, and we're going to get through this together and share what we know so that we can be a supportive community for each other. Uh, big hugs, lots of love. Bye for now. And I will see you very soon.